Hey guys, this is Daniel Romero, also Dr. Audio Music, and I want to show you guys how I made the music for a video game that I'm working on called Shopkeep. Here's the track so you guys can hear all the elements working together. I started this project off by using the Celtic hammered dulcimer. Uh, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but it is the Logic preset in the EXS24 and it is under the European folder under World and Factory. The Celtic hammered dulcimer is also accompanied with the flute and that establishes the main core of the song. I'll play them. It's just a simple progression. and builds with the different instrumentation. For the lead flute, I use the East West Quantum Leap Symphonic Orchestra uh, solo flute, and I use the key switch master preset. I turn the velocities all the way up on the key switches so I know which ones are key switches and which ones are notes I have actually played. I'll let it play so you guys can hear what the different articulations sound like. Some of the changes are very drastic when they're heard by themselves, but when it's actually in the mix, you can't really tell too much and it sounds pretty good. The Celtic Hammer to Seamer sounded a little bit too much of the same thing the whole time it was playing, so I had to do something different to make it change. So what I did is I opened up the EXS24 and I automated the envelope throughout the different sections. So I'll open up the automation here and you can see that the envelope for the EXS24 is being automated. I'll play it so you can hear the difference how it opens up in the beginning. This sounds more spacey and less of an attack. Then it starts to open. And for the fourth section, I just duplicated the track and opened the envelope all the way so that way it is the most drastic it can be. For the strings, I used the East West Quantum Leap Hollywood strings. Uh, the gold version, and I'll go ahead and play you guys with the strings and see what they sound like. The way I labeled everything is so I can uh, easily find my way around the arrangement. This arrangement's not too big or complex, so it's not really that hard to get lost in the session but if i have a session where it's more than you know 50 tracks and it can easily get pretty hard to navigate so i i color code everything so that way i can know what things are which for instance these uh yellow tracks here are all my percussion and um, i just put them all together so that way i know which ones are the percussions and then for another example is the strings i uh, color those all brown because obviously they're brown you know strings are you know brown color so uh i labeled those the way they are other instruments i kind of just try to color them the way i think they would look with the logics color board you can't 
customize colors, so I just try to use the close colors I can. And obviously, I was trying to go for gray because most of these are either black or gray uh, color instruments. To pull up the color palette, you can either press Option C or you can press it over here on the toolbar and it'll bring it up. If you don't see it over here, you can click anywhere in the gray areas and uh, click Customize Toolbar, Colors. And then I'll bring it up to your toolbar menu. This music piece is only about a minute and 40 seconds. I did that to save memory in the video game. Most players are not even going to be on the main menu screen for that long, so having something that's longer than two minutes is going to be pretty pointless. For my mastering chain, I don't really have anything too complex. Uh, to start, I have a linear phase EQ, and that is rolling off the very low end and rolling off the very high end. Also, I've added just a small little boost to the mid-high range. I'll go ahead and play it. It's not really no difference. Just makes it a little bit more warmer with this boost. And then I have Isotope, which I am using to control the dynamics, stereo imaging, and using a maximizer to make it a little bit more louder. The dynamics, which is a multi-compressor, and it's just controlling each uh, frequency band and making sure nothing really pops out more than it should. Just little soft touches. For the stereo imaging, I have the low end band all the way down to negative 100. That way the uh, low end is mono and it eliminates any kind of phasing issues that may occur. And then on the high end, I added a small boost to give it more space. And then lastly, I'm using the maximizer with the soft mode and just giving it a little bit of a less threshold just so it can get a little bit louder. And then I use the adaptive limiter that is a plugin from Logic. Uh, I'm using it to make the track louder and making sure that it does not pass the 0 dB level. And then I have my multimeter to analyze everything and just to see where everything is at on the spectrum. Before I export, I have to make sure that the track is set up so it can re-loop properly in the game. So what I do is I press A to open up the automation and I make the selection to where the fade in is uh, before the actual start point of the automation so that way there's no pops or clicks and it's a very smooth transition. Saying so, all the way at the end, I have to make sure that the selection is after the automation point has finished, that way there also is no other pops or clicks. For exporting the session and getting it ready for gameplay, all I did was go to Bounce, PCM, File Format Wave, Resolution 24-bit, Sample Rate 44.1, file type interleave, dithering none, and leave the rest of these settings the way they are, and then click bounce. Feel free to follow the game at nddb.com. I will leave a link in the description so you guys can uh, check the page out and follow the game and uh, watch its progress and play it whenever it comes out. Also feel free to follow the developer, which is Strangefire. There will also be a link in the description so you can check these guys out and see what they do. In addition, you can check out their Twitter to get their latest updates and all that good stuff. All right, that concludes the rest of this video. If you have any other questions about what I did on the specific track, then go ahead and comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next video.